Good morning, this is D-Roy Cruz, your Life Applications Officer. Um, uh, getting on with it, I guess this will be part five. Um, I want to clear up some things that I said in the last video. I couldn't get them out. I still can't get them out but because um, I didn't write them down. But I was just looking over the video that I did um, on the last. And uh, I said some good points in there, so I didn't want to, you know, erase it. If I had the right kind of video program, I could go and edit stuff. And But I figured I'd just leave it like it is. And, you know... I'm going to say this one more time, okay? Um, the Bible doesn't condone slavery. Now, um, I mean, back in the day, at that time, first of all, the Bible has never, ever condoned what happened to black folks. He didn't condone it then. He doesn't condone it now. Especially now. And slavery didn't stop just because, you know, I know what atheists are thinking, you know, slavery stopped because the Americans do. Yeah, well, hello, the same Americans that put us through slavery decided to stop it. What's that tell you? Duh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but the Bible does not condone slavery. Any idiot that thinks that the Bible condones slavery is an idiot. Okay, I'm sorry. You're an idiot. The Bible does not condone slavery. If you read it, this is where atheists need to keep their nose out of the Bible until they're ready to understand why they should even go near a Bible in the first place. There's no reason for you to go near a Bible unless um, you are interested in learning the Bible for yourself. You know, when I was a youngster coming up reading the Bible, um, and I read those scriptures that are really, really, you know, um, I guess you could say controversial, and you stop and you wonder, wait a minute, God, why'd you do that? Why is that like that? And I just thank God that I had an uncle, even though he was kind of eloquent. But when he died not too long ago, I realized just how much he taught me what is eloquent behind, okay? Um, he taught me a lot, and I remember, you know, I used to ask him questions when I was a teenager because I was one of the only teenagers in my youth group that was actually saved, that was actually living the life as a Christian. Um, you know, I was living the lifestyle. And, uh, you know, you know, I had questions for my uncle, and I asked him about these things. And when I seen things in the Bible that were like, whoa, okay, God showed his love over here. Now everybody's getting annihilated over here. So I had to ask questions about that. And um, I remember, you know, if atheism works for you, that's your business. But I remember preachers coming up and talking about, you know, like when we get in church and we talk about, like, let's say the Amalekites, one of the favorite atheist videos, I'm, I'm sorry, atheist scriptures, that they love to throw at Christians about how God um, sent the Israelites into the Amalekites camp and killed all the, killed everybody, annihilated everybody, told them to wipe them all out. Well, um, I remember uh, preachers back in the day preaching on that. And, they, and, and I was like, are you kidding me? You know, I was, I was like, whoa, you know, they're preaching on that? I just thought that that was one of those things in the Bible where, like, you know, don't even go there. Let's not go there. That's, you know, but you know what I found out, especially now and over the years. You don't have to leave out anything in the Bible. Bible says all scripture is given for inspiration, for doctrine, for reproof and instruction. Okay? 
all scripture. Now, maybe you don't want to go around and say, hey, let me tell you about the Amalekites. And, well, I'm going to tell you, you kids are wrong because of the Amalekites. No, no one's going to preach a sermon like that. But it's just like, you know, certain mathematics. You learn how to use them. Okay, you learn how, you learn, first of all, how, you know, one thing fits to fits into another. And then you put your uh, your problem together. And then you can use that problem to figure out the sum. Okay, but you don't go over to people and say, well, I know you owe me money because of quotations. I know you owe me money because of uh, because algebra says, or, or, you know what I'm saying? No, you don't go and explain algebra to people to tell them that they owe you money, or explain the difference between a, a quotation and a sum or something to, to explain that someone owes you money. Those words don't even pop up when we talk about money. Okay? But we learned all that stuff in school so that we could figure out our bills. And so we keep it to basically whether you learn exponents, algebra, geometry, um, you, know, uh, you know, whatever kind of math you learn. Okay? Um, you're not going to go around and talk about the math you learn. You're going to talk about, you're going to say things in a way where people can understand that we can all come to the understanding of what the sum is. You're not going to go and teach people math all over again. Neither are you going to uh, explain big words to them in order to explain to them how they owe money. Um, that's just more confusing, but you're going to explain to them in a way that you've set up the most basic ways, which would be the addition and subtraction of how they owe that money to you. And, you know, like even with understanding percentages and, and all like that, you're going to break it down for them, okay? And that's the way a preacher does when he preaches the word. He breaks it down. And this guy broke it down. And, I, I mean, I could sit here all night and break down um, everything that I understand because I do understand. I understand this almost because there are some people that understand it better than me. It sure ain't no atheist. That's a damn lie. There ain't no such thing as no atheist understanding the word of God better than I do. Because if you understood the word of word of God better than I do, you wouldn't need to be an atheist. Because this doesn't call for atheism. This doesn't call this doesn't call for war. This doesn't cause or call for any battle. Atheists are in a battle with Christians. This doesn't call for a battle. It might call for you to either reject it or accept it. That's it. That's it. There is no, oh, well, you know, the Bible made me an atheist. No, it did. There's a there's a, there's there's a hundred million non-believers out there that 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 reject this, and it didn't make him an atheist. Okay? You either reject it because you don't understand it or you don't like the way someone's preaching it. But you don't turn and just like try to like blow the whistle. You know, just like psh, cut off. Well, I'm an atheist. That's it. I'm an atheist. Throw your hands up. I'm an atheist. Now that's called an idiot. When you just throw in a towel like that. Okay? That's what that is. All right? And I'm really upset with this guy for claiming that Christians own people. The only thing I own is you. Because I know how to put the word atheist in my title. And you all all come running like a bunch of scavengers. You all come running up on my channel. Hungry for something. What are you so hungry for? Oh, I know what you're hungry for. You're hungry because you need... A Christian to argue with in order to be an atheist.
because, like I said in another video, unless you are a, unless, like I said in another video, the only way that atheism works is if you're in an argument with a Christian. Because atheism doesn't do anything for you. There's a hundred million, trillion, however many non-believers out there. Most of the world are non-believers. more non-believers out there than there are religious people who believe that maybe there is a God. It's not my problem whether there is a God or not. That's what they tell me. You know, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. Maybe there is a God. It's not my problem. What is God doing for me right now? Is he killing me? Is he bringing me to... Maybe he did wake me up this morning and start me on my marvelous way. I don't know. I don't care. They're honest. Atheists are not. When you go and you just cut right down the middle and throw it out there like that. You're not being honest. You're not being honest at all. These non-believers out here that atheists will attack too. And say, well, you're either an atheist... Or you're an agnostic, uh, or are you, or you're a theist, or you're you know they give name, and that's one of the things that you know that's another thing where they can go um, lock themselves in the bathroom and 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 enjoy the smell of their own doo doo for a while until they until they get it in their thick skull. Okay, you can give as many definitions for people as you want. What's your definition? This guy's an agnostic. This guy's a theist. A deist. An atheist. What's your definition? Atheist? What's your definition? Whether you're an atheist, a deist, a theist, an agnostic, or whatever you are. Okay? We all eat the same food. We all live off the same oxygen. We all drive whatever cars are in the market to buy. We all work at whatever jobs are out there to uphold. Where do you begin to be special? Whether you're a Christian, deist, theist, atheist, agnostic, whatever you are, you all, we all eat, we all sleep. We all got to exercise and eat right to be in health. We all poop. The poop is always brown when it comes out. Where, where, where are you special? But anyway, I want to clear up something um, real quick. I didn't set my phone, I don't believe. Um, so I got, I'm going to make this quick. Um, I didn't set my phone to not be disturbed by calls and it's early and I'm getting ready to get out of here but I was looking at that video and I figured I better clean this up while I can remember because I just deleted the video um, on my phone so I wanted to first of all the Bible does not condone slavery it does not condone slavery the slavery in the Bible I was going to look up some scriptures for you Okay, but unless atheists ask me to write down scriptures for them and explain to them, I'm not going to do it. Because the, what's the title of this video? You can't win a debate with an atheist. So unless an atheist asks me, personally asks me, to write down scriptures that explain what slavery is, then I'll do it. I was looking up some verses. I was looking up, you know, if you look up, I'll put it like this, if you look up, where slavery began in the book of Genesis. And then you look up, you know, you look up, uh, you know, how Noah cursed his own sons. Okay? Canaan became a slave to his own brothers. Okay? And when you read that and you bring that to how that was part of the culture, and then Abraham and Sarah had Hagar as a bondwoman. Slave woman, okay? Um, that didn't keep her from teaching her son to rebel against God's people. Now, did it? 
Okay? So how much abusing this woman was they doing? Okay? Um, when you look at that, and then you go into the, and, and you look at that through Genesis, how, how there were different types of slavery, like when Joseph was taken to the land of Egypt as a slave. His brother sold him into slavery. Now you're getting into pagan slavery. That's a totally different thing. And even in pagan slavery, Joseph became what? He became a king. Kiss my behind, atheist. Joseph became a king. That's where you can kiss my behind. He was the king of Egypt. Egypt at one time, that's why a lot of Egyptians today and a lot of black folks think that, you know, and that's where they're off. Because at one time, Egypt was a Christian nation. Okay, it was a, it was a land of, for Christians when Joseph was in reign, but that was just a minute. But Joseph became a king in Egypt. And then after Joseph, um, you know, that's near the end of the book of Genesis. Then you get into Exodus, and what do you see? You see another form of pagan slavery. Okay, and after that, okay, the Israelites had people that they were in control of. People that were in their own family that they were in control of. You know, just like, you know, I used to live with, I used to live with my grandfather. And my grandfather was not my biological grandfather. He took care of me. He gave me jobs to do around the house. And if I failed to do, because he wasn't too crazy about me and my mother, I never could understand why. I loved the man dearly, and when he died, he apologized. You know, on his deathbed, he apologized to me for everything we've been through together. But, you know, um, or should I say on his deathbed, he finally started to appreciate me. But, um, while I was living in his house after my mom died, he was with the burden of um, taking care of me. Okay? I had to clean. I had to work in that house. And if I didn't go out and get a job, hello, hello, if I didn't go out and get a job and put money back into that house, even though my grandpa was loaded, okay? If I didn't get a job and put back into that house, I was a slave to whatever my grandfather wanted me to do because he was not my biological grandfather, okay? Him, him and my grandmother didn't make any promises about how I was going to take care of. They didn't know my mother was going to just die all of a sudden of diabetes. I mean, she was young. She was 44 years old when she died. So now I'm being taken care of. I'm a burden on these people that are taking care of me. Him and his family took care of me. So I had jobs to do in his house. I wasn't out there doing what I wanted to do, living off this man's money. I had to clean, I had to take I had to babysit my cousins, I had to do different things, okay? Because why? I'm not in charge. And that's all slavery is. It means that somebody is in charge of you. You don't have the freedom, okay, to do whatever you want to do because you don't have that kind of money or your family was either an outcast or an underclass and I studied all this stuff I have I have the best thing in the world right there in, in, in NYKG I did a video on it in NKJV complete edition and it talks about it talks about it has a big section on slavery in there if you want to do study on slavery go ahead but one thing I won't tolerate there's people coming to my channel telling me that I believe in owning people. The only thing I own is your stupid little idiotic behind. I don't appreciate that. And that's one of the things I'm getting sick of. This guy had nothing to say about anything I said in the video. Oh, I don't believe in owning people. Where, did I, where were we talking about slavery in the video? This is why atheists are so dumb. They don't realize their own criminality. They don't realize. They can't see. Dude, who said anything about slavery in the, in, in the video? Stick to what we're talking about. No, he figured, oh, I'm here to bust. 
I'm here to interrupt. I'm here to crush. The only thing you're going to crush, okay, is your own mama. Pay her some extra money for sp speaking that nonsense in her house. Really gets me eps it gets me angry. It makes me want to just say, okay, screw it, forget it. But I gotta admit, I gotta admit, whether I want to be like Jesse Morel, that's his name, that's the guy. It's not David, it's not Jason, it's not um, John, Sam, whatever I said before. It's Jesse. I, I looked it up. I found a marker in my Bible where I wrote the guy's name down. It's Jesse Morel. The open air preacher. You think I'm ticking you off. You think I'm kicking your butt. Listen to Jesse Morrell. Because Jesse Morrell, I don't really agree with him. You don't just walk out on the street. He was the one I was talking about. You don't just walk out on the street and say, I'm here to tell you about your sin, your sin, your sin, your sin. Because you're wicked, 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 wicked. <laughs> you don't just go out there and talk to people like that. And these atheists were like, you know, give them the finger. Yeah, you know, go ask you, your mama, you know. Um, that's not the way to do, you know, I don't think when Jonah went to Nineveh, he talked like that. And when John the Baptist uh, spoke to the religious leaders, he could talk like that because they were religious leaders. And when Jesus spoke to the religious leaders, he didn't have mercy on them either, but when he spoke to those that are unbelievers, the Bible says Jesus looked at the world and he seen everybody as lost sheep and he felt sorry, he felt compassion for them. And so it is compassion that wins souls. It is not going out on the street yelling and screaming um, at other people. Now, as I said, if you want to study slavery in the Bible, slavery in the Bible is not it's not pagan slavery and it's not it's in there you know when the Israelites were taken over by the Egyptians before Joseph before Joseph became king okay okay or after Joseph died they went back to their pagan ways and um, now they're taking the Israelites into slavery okay but if you read the story of Joseph, Joseph, the story of Joseph in the Bible explains it all. Joseph took his own family and forced them. They didn't know that that was their flesh and blood. He did because they studied everything. And he forced them into Egypt and um, forced them to live with him. And they thought that he wanted to enslave their youngest brother, which was wasn't their young brother, it was his biological baby brother that he couldn't stop thinking about, you know what I mean, because um, he was the youngest at the time when he was, when they did what they did. And uh, Joseph, um, um, he actually used all his power as a king um, to bring his family, and at the end of the story, a lot of, a lot of tears and, and blessing. A lot of crying all over each other because he brought his family back together. He used the concept of slavery, biblical slavery. He used the concept of slavery and the power of kings and queens to do it. But he brought his family back together and he made them a power in the nation of Egypt. I don't know if Egypt's a nation or it's part of a nation. Don't quote me. I'm from America. I don't know. Okay. I don't really get into all the geography stuff. I need, I, I know, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, I do need to get into it. But anyway, in the Bible, it's called the land of Egypt. It's not called a nation. It's called the land of Egypt. But anyway, um, you know, and that's just an example of the difference between pagan slavery and slavery done by the Israelites. Now, is there Christian slavery? No, there is no Christian slavery. Because if you look at the New Testament, Paul talked to those that were already, because their bloodline, bloodlines, 
were slaves, okay, to other people's bloodlines, okay? Now, what does that mean? That means that, like it was in, in my granddad's house, my bloodline is taking care of your bloodline, so you are my slave. Just like these videos I'm doing. You atheists are my slaves. Okay? Because without me doing these videos, okay, you would be somewhere whacking off or lighting up another joint. Or maybe you're smoking a joint while you're watching this video. That's why you don't know how to talk common sense. Okay? But anyway, okay, without people putting the word atheist in the title, atheists are going to be bored out of their mind. Okay? Because that's all they know how to do. You become an atheist so you can so you can troll YouTube. But when you're in a situation where people are talking about the goodness of the Lord, and they and you say, excuse me, I'm an atheist. And they say, excuse us. Okay, that's fine. We'll go over here and talk then. Now you're bored again. Now you're back to being bored. Because now you got to stand there by your lonesome. Okay, your lonesome old miserable pagan self. Okay, because... You, 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 you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can talk about anything, but when we talk about the Lord, that goes along with everything else. Especially if I'm in a situation where, you know, somebody enjoys talking to me and then they understand that I'm a Christian and I start putting, you know, adding some truth to what we're talking about and how that works in our, in our daily lives. Okay. Then you're, again, you're struck. You're stuck with your lonesome because people want to hear it. And like I said in the last video, I'm finding out that there's not that many non, uh, there's not that many atheists in Pennsylvania. Okay, it's not like everywhere I go, I have to, you know. I mean, I, I have my Bible open on a podium on my job. It's sitting there like this. And when students walk outside the door, Okay, and faculty walk past my desk. They see a big old Thompson chain sitting there slanted like this to where you can see it. And I don't have it sitting there like that. I have it sitting there because I'm reading it. I'm not sitting it there to say, oh, I tripped my foot here so this is a holy place. No, it's not a holy place. Okay, I just got it sitting there because I'm reading it, but then, but I'm working. I'm working, and when I'm at my post, keeping my eyes on everything, I have something there to read. I'd rather read the Bible than... You know, seeing half-naked girls in some magazine. Okay? So I got my Bible open and I'm reading my Bible while I'm, while I'm watching everything. Okay? And, I, and that's legal in a, in a kind of work that I do. Okay? But I've worked at places where people walk past and they see a Bible sitting there and they say, what's this nonsense? And I had to get for permission. I had to go over their head and get permission to have my Bible there. I says, hey boss, as long as I do my job... Who cares if I have a Bible? Who cares if I keep a Bible handy? Okay? Yeah, you're right. You know, as long as he make sure he does his job. But as far as his Bible, leave it alone. Okay? Or we can talk about your porno magazines that you bring to work every day. How about that? Leave his Bible alone. It ain't bothering you. And I've been through that. Okay? So, uh, you know, um... I'm going to, I, I got to get out of here. Okay. I got to get out of here. I want to get out of here. I got, I made plans today and I'm not backing on my plans. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to get me some art supplies. I got to call the store. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that if you're not willing to go into this Bible, and it's good that you're not willing, because I remember back in the day when I used to argue with people about stuff. I could use one verse because of my evil desire to argue. I could use one verse of scripture to argue with what somebody else was saying. And I've had people, you know, um, I just thank God for the people that have been in my life because they've been true Christians. I haven't had, you know, my life from my childhood to now, even though I left the church. I left a good church. I left a good church. It's just some of the people in that church um, were um, people.
people of, they were ignorant as far as, you know, what God is calling us to do. Um, they, they felt that, oh, you know, yeah, we can be Christians, but we don't have to like white people just because we're Christians. Oh, yeah, we can be Christians, but we don't have to stop uh, talking like this or acting like this or doing this or, or treating people like this and, and um, you know, and uh, I just, I knew better and insulted my intelligence. And so when, you know, when I was old enough to move on, I left and I didn't worry about the church. And, you know, nobody uh, considered that I was getting an education while I was gone and I wanted to set out on my own. Why? Because even though I was a slave, basically, to my grandpa, because he was not my biological grandpa, okay, my side of the family is dying, okay? So I'm becoming more and more each week a slave to his side of the family. But see, I was free. I was free. Once I was old enough to be free. Not only did I leave my grandfather's house, and he was glad I left. Because that's less of a burden for him. But, I left my church. Because I'm old enough and I'm grown enough to know that there's other churches and there's other things. But I didn't leave for that reason at that time. I left because I went to Job Corps. I left because I set out on my own. I wanted, you know, I wanted to travel. I wanted to, you know, I got a, got with a friend of mine and we traveled in a little bit. And uh, um, then we came back and um, I moved to Westmoreland County. And I lived out in Westmoreland County for about 30 years. And, uh, um... You know, um, I, I, I learned how to, when I left Job Corps, as I keep saying in other videos, when I left Job Corps, um, I set back out to get my relationship with God correct. But when I went into Job Corps, I was a backslider. I was angry at my church. I was upset with my church, the people in it. Okay, and I realized in Job Corps that just because you get upset with God and walk away, that doesn't make the world come become better. Okay, and I realized that the people that were around me that I tried to kick it with were full of wickedness. You know, I tried to, you know, I was home away from home and I was around people that were wicked. And when I say people that were wicked, I mean people that you see on the street every day. People that might be sitting right next to you right now as you're watching this video. Okay, I'm talking about people that were fornicators, adulterers, homos, um, lesbos, and, um, you know. And it, But it wasn't that part of it that, that bothered me about these people. It wasn't the fact that you're gay. It wasn't the fact that she's lesbian. It wasn't the fact that you are, are living with your girlfriend. Um, you're cheating on your wife, you know, um, you got a girl that's not even legal, she's not even of a legal age, be your girlfriend, you run around with her like nobody's business, you know, um, it wasn't that that really upset me about these people, what it was is their personality was so ungodly, act, gay people act a certain way. When they're in a position to, to be able to act that way. Um, gays, lesbians, um, transgender people. Transgender people have all kinds of beliefs. It, ain't, it doesn't just stop at them believing that they're not a man when they are a man. Or a woman when they are a woman. You know, I'm not a woman, I'm a man. Or I'm not a man, I'm a woman. It doesn't just stop at that. They, they believe other twisted things too. Um, atheists. Don't only uh, just get angry with Christians, but they're always angry about something. They're always fussing about something. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you know what I'm saying. And then, and then, you know, when things don't go the way an atheist wants them to go, he needs somebody to blame. Okay. 
you say, well, it's the everything's Christian's fault, and it ain't just, it ain't, it ain't all religion. You might quote that, but it's not all religion. Now, some people, because they have been Mormons and they became atheists, they'll deal with the Mormon Church. Like I watched the video, and a guy was very honest. He was an atheist here on YouTube, and he was very honest. He said that he's going to deal with the Mormons because that was the church that he came out of. That, you know, so atheists say dumb stuff like, well, if you lived over here, you'd be a Christian. If you lived over here, you'd be a Muslim. And if you lived over here, you'd be this and you'd be that. Not necessarily. Is that why there's so many Christians being killed in the Middle East? Okay. How many Chinese people do you believe, do you know that are Christian? How many Japanese people? people do you believe that are Christian? How many of how many of those people do you think are Catholic? Okay? All right? A lot of people would be becoming Amish and and going to Amish churches if they could if they were allowed to do that, but Amish is more about their race than it is about their faith. So, you can't just go and say I want to be an Amish. So, I'm going to go and, you know, let my hair grow, grow a beard, and wear a straw hat, and get rid of my computer, and my car, and my motorcycle, and everything, my cell phone, and everything, and just live out on the farm. They're not going to let you do that. You don't get to get in there like that. Okay? But if everybody could just be whatever religion they wanted to be, which you can be any religion you want to be, what's it cost you to climb the mountains and be a monk? And be a real Buddhist? And practice Buddhism for what it really is. Okay? Um, but my point is, um, it's not the way atheists say it is. Okay? And atheists are just sitting back, you know, they don't, they, you know, they try to, you know, they try to, you know, they try to act like they got a personal, their own personal war going on with Christians. Well, go on with your bad self. But you know what? The world's not going to become better because you hate Christians. And you will get rid of Christians. Christianity is dying. After looking at that video that I watched last night, um, a call for an uprising. And I know a lot of you know him. And uh, he showed that video of Jay-Z going into churches preaching his nonsense now and people are sucking it up he calling himself a satanist but he gonna go in churches and preach his dogma now they're gonna do a whole they're gonna do a holy dance on jay-z day give me a freaking break okay oh yeah okay um it's not gonna go the way you wanted to go atheist and, and then, you know, like uh, another thing that a call for an uprising was saying was that a lot of atheists think that Satanism is not a religion. That's a big deception. Satanism is a religion. It's a big religion. So many followers. Probably just as many followers as there are as Christians. At least. At least. If not more. Of course there's more. But there's a lot of Satanists. The thing is... Satanists are so divided by those that are real Satanists and those that are just wanting something to be into because they're bored. They don't know what to do with themselves. For one thing, this what I love about God and what I love about His Word is that God has shown me how to enjoy, okay, the finer things in life. Okay, that we walk past every day and it's never enough. It's never enough. But to a Christian, it is enough. To a Christian, God is enough. Jesus is enough for a Christian. Um, we work, we, 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 you know, we work and we take care of our families. And then when we play, we don't have to give up on God or hate God or, 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 or do something slick acting like we can do it behind God's back in order to have a good time. We don't have to do that. But, don't ever tell me that I believe in owning people, as this, this, this jack behind put it. Okay? 
I don't like that kind of talk because that's not what most Christians I know believe. Now, if you think you know a Christian that believes in owning people and you can actually go down and you can take the FBI to his house and show the world where he owns people, okay, then you're free to go there. But unless you're going to really do a study on atheism, I mean, I'm sorry, a study on slavery, okay, shut up. I don't want to hear that mess on my channel. Okay? Because first of all, first of all, right now there is no slave. Slavery has been outlawed in America. End of discussion. That's it right there. Slavery is outlawed in America. It doesn't matter to me whether a Christian once practiced slavery. Okay? And it took America, it took the government, it took the White House, the Supreme Court to help them understand it was wrong or whether... Um, it was something more political or something. I know what it was. And the abolitionists, most of them, did not own slaves. And it was the abolitionists that preached the gospel to the slaves. It wasn't slave owners that preached the gospel to the slaves. And that that is a lot of history right there that um, is being left out of the out of the mix. But the truth is, slavery is not biblical. Israelites practicing slavery as what the Bible calls slavery um, in the Bible is not slavery at all. Everybody is a slave. I'm a slave to Christ. My Bible tells me because I believe Jesus said whatever you give yourself over to you become a slave to that thing. Whatever you obey, you are a slave. So, when I was a kid, I was a slave to my mama. Okay? Yes, I was a slave to my church. I was a, I'm a slave to my job. I'm a slave to uh, 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 anybody that I allow to come to me and have the first word and the last word. Okay? According to the Bible, it ain't got nothing to do with holding people locked up in cages and whooping them with whips and 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 making them do slave labor. Of course, a lot of people that work at the AAA building, they ain't got to do nothing but sit there and talk on the phone. They call it slave labor. Okay? A lot of people that are out there um, working for Walmart, they call it slave labor. Even the managers... They call it slave labor. But nice try, atheists, trying to say that the Bible is all about owning people. No, the only thing, the only people that own people is your people, whatever race you come from. Okay? Because if you really look at the Bible and, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Slavery in the first four chapters of Exodus. You got slavery over here. And, you know, Abraham had a slave. And Noah called Canaan a slave. That's two different things. Once you get to reading it and understanding, that's two different things. Black slavery, where's black slavery in here? Black slavery sounds more like uh, the beginning of the book of Exodus. But wait a minute. That has nothing to do with Noah and Abraham. See? Unless you're going to get in here and read it and study it, leave it alone. Come up with something better. Because you come on my channel saying something like, I don't believe in owning people, and I don't believe in having idiots on my channel, so I'm going to delete you. Don't tell me, I'm from, from this day forward, don't tell me that I'm doing something, that I'm, that, that, that I'm doing something unless I tell you that I'm doing it. Because you don't know that. I don't know a single Christian that believes in owning slaves. I don't know a single Christian that has any slaves. I don't know, I don't know a Muslim or a Catholic that has slaves. So what are you talking about? Until next time. Wipe your butt because you're nasty and funky. And you don't know what you're talking about. God bless you. I'll see you soon.